The Sun City Warrior was looking for an upset against Anthony Durrell last night. In order to win, though, he would have to knock his opponent out. But would he? Good morning, El Paso. I'm Will Heron with your look at sports. A.B. Han, the brother of IBF World Featherweight Champion Jen Ron. Jen, not used to being outside of the ring as a spectator, but last night she was cheering on her brother. The Haskins Center was rocking. A.B. Han back in the ring for a super middleweight showdown. Taking on Anthony Durrell in the first round, the big guy going to the body, but A.B. showing no fear in this one. He was going for that knockout early. Later in the first, Han takes a shot and goes down. He'd get a standing eight, but it'd be okay. In the second, Durrell getting in some massive uppercuts. This one right under Han's chin. In the fourth round, things get a little chippy. Han has Durrell up against the ropes, but Durrell with a takedown, and both fighters go at it. They would have to be separated. The ref getting both fighters a warning, but the fight would go on. This match would go all 10 rounds. Han gave it everything he had, but he could read the writing on the wall. Durrell, he knows he's one. He's just doing backflips. Jennifer Han looking on. Out of the 408 punches thrown, Han only landed 73, while Durrell landed 205. He wins it by a unanimous decision. Han's record is now at 26 wins, four losses, and one draw. We caught up with Han right after the fight. It was amazing. You know, I, I wish, uh, you know, I could have delivered a win. You know, maybe if we're the same size, you could see the size difference in the fight. You know, he was way bigger. You know, I, w I went into the ring maybe around 172, if that, you know, uh, in the ring. And he was probably around 190, you know, so you could see the big weight difference in, in the fight. Um, but, you know, there's no excuses. The better man won, you know, and I got to figure out what to do if I'm going to fight people like this in the ring next time. The main event was a welterweight clash between Miguel Cruz and Osito Lopez. Lopez in the green striped trunks going on a rampage here in the third round. Manos de piernas. Lopez going to win this one by unanimous decision. Cruz tasting his defeat for the first time in his career. Start going to the body, going to the head. All right, don't blink because he just might miss it. Jorge Lara on the left taking on Claudio Moreno. And 33 seconds into the fight. Yep, you got it. A knockout. Lara tries to get back to his feet, but he can't. Moreno gets the win and shows some great sportsmanship right here. Trying to help Lara back onto his feet. Awesome night of boxing over at the Haskins Center. Yeah, that's the one thing about An NMSU and a second UTEP minor are headed to the NFL. On the final day of the draft, the Baltimore Ravens picked up talented wide receiver Jaleel Scott in the fourth round, and Alvin Jones signed with the Ravens right after the draft. Who knows? They might end up being teammates at the beginning of the year. Another weapon for Joe Flacco or Lamar Jackson, maybe. The kind of guy, you know, you can just throw the ball up and he'll come down with it. Who could forget that unbelievable catch that he made against Arizona State last season? In his two years with the Aggies, Scott had 99 receptions for a total of 1,362 yards and 14 touchdowns. He becomes the first NMSU Aggie to be drafted by an NFL team since 2013. Linebacker Alvin Jones posted on Twitter today that he signed a free agent contract with the Ravens. Alvin is the brother of Aaron Jones, who you may have heard of, and is the running back of the Green Bay Packers. So we could have both Jones brothers playing in the NFL next season. Wouldn't that be awesome? So what would the Cowboys do on the final day of the draft? With their last six picks, they improved multiple areas of the team. In the fourth round, the Cowboys picked up defensive end Dorrance Armstrong out of Kansas. Also in the fourth, the boys took Stanford tight end Dalton Schultz, who might see a lot more playing time than a rookie normally does, especially if Jason Witten does indeed retire. And in the fifth, the Cowboys grabbed quarterback Mike White out of Western Kentucky. In the sixth round, Cowboys going back to defense, picking up another linebacker, Chris Covington out of Indiana. Also in the sixth, a wide receiver out of Boise State, Cedric Wilson. And in the seventh round, Cowboys select a running back out of Alabama, Bo Scarborough.
Mike White, the QB out of Western Kentucky, is an interesting selection for the Cowboys. White actually played against UTEP this season for the Hilltoppers at the Sun Bowl. White had two rushing touchdowns in that game, but he's also got a cannon for an arm. It will be interesting to see if he gets the job as the backup for Dak Prescott. Cowboys got a veteran wide receiver yesterday. Tavon Austin is now a Cowboy. The boys traded a six-round pick to the L.A. Rams in order to get him. Austin has played all of his five seasons in the NFL with the Rams. Looks like the Cowboys are scooping up veteran receivers after releasing Des Bryant earlier this month. Also, the Cowboys traded receiver and punt returner Ryan Switzer to the Raiders in exchange for defensive tackle Jihad Ward. Let's talk a little high school track. We had some first place finishes Saturday at the regional meets, which means these runners are advancing on to the state finals. We start with another good showing for Michael Obieta of Hanks. He finished first in the 800 meter run in class 5A. He also qualified in the 1600 meter run after he finished second in that event. Staying in 5A, Parkland's Kenny Jones finished first in the 300 meter hurdles. And on the girls side, Jefferson's Breonna Pinckney took first in the 300 meter hurdles. Coach Rosales is going to be happy about that. In 4A, San Elizario's Edwin Gonzalez took the region title in the 1600 meter run and Tornillos Daniel Amayo in the 1600 meter in Class 3A. The El Paso Chihuahuas were trying to get back in the win column last night after back-to-back -back losses. Dogs hosting the Bees out of Salt Lake. El Paso up 1-0 on the bottom of the fourth, and Rafi Lopez is going to send this one over to Santa Fe Street. Watch out, Uber drivers. A solo homer. Chihuahuas up 2-0. But we're going to fast forward to the bottom of the eighth. Game tied at two. Diego Gores don't mean a thing if you ain't got that swing. Bye. A three-run home run. Makes it five to two Chihuahuas. The dogs will go in fuego from there. They ended up taking it seven to two. Finally, NBA playoffs. Game seven, do or die for both the Bucks and the Celtics. Third quarter, Boston up 13 with Jason Tatum from the wing. Perfecto. Then in the fourth, it's Terry Rose here, extending the Celtics' lead with that tray. The Celtics wanted it more. They're moving on, knocking out the Bucks, 112 to 96. The final. They'll meet Philadelphia in the Eastern Conference semifinals. Lots of look at sports. Y'all have yourself a fantastic rest of your morning.